Hello everyone, we're going to talk about the Pleiades star cluster. Craig and Ford recently made a really interesting video about the myths associated with the Pleiades star cluster, linked in the video description. Part of this video was about how we call the Pleiades the Seven Sisters, even though most people can only see six stars. Many myths include one of the sisters leaving the group, suggesting that long ago there were seven visible stars that somehow became six. The answer may lie with two stars, Atlas and Pleione, which are so close together that they appear to be a single star to most unaided eyes. Craig and Ford quotes a suggestion by Norris and Norris in 2009 that the motion of the stars in the Pleiades caused these stars to be more separated in the past, so they appear as two stars. But in 2009, these star motions were too uncertain to be sure. In this video, we will use the much more accurate star motions from the Gaia satellite that were released just this past June to see if Norris and Norris's suggestion stands up. On the left is a map of stars brighter than magnitude 15 that appear near the Pleiades. On the right is how those stars appear to a person with excellent eyesight. We see that Atlas and Pleione indeed appear as a single star. Now we'll go back in time. As we go backwards in time, the stars in the Pleiades cluster move slowly with respect to each other, while the cluster itself moves against the background stars. Occasionally, we see stars not in the cluster moving through the view. About 100,000 years ago, Atlas and Pleione are much more separated and appear as two stars, as suggested by Norris and Norris. At about 200,000 years ago, the Pleiades looks very different. Now we go forward in time, returning to the present day. As we approach the present day, we see Atlas and Pleione coming so close together that they look like a single star. Let's do that again. By now, you may have noticed that as Atlas and Pleione separate, two other stars, Alcyone and Merope, merge together, so we still have only six stars. Hmm. But as we get back to about 200,000 years ago, all the stars become separate, and we have seven stars. Because we're good scientists, we have to worry about uncertainty in the star motion in the Gaia data. Here we show the light from Atlas and Pleione plotted along a line between the two stars' positions on the sky. Atlas is the green line, and Pleione is the yellow line. The shape of the curves reflect blurring of light in the human eye with excellent eyesight. The purple line is the sum of the light from the two stars. The relative heights of Atlas and Pleione's curves reflect how Atlas is several times brighter than Pleione. The purple line showing the total light from the two stars is only a little different from the green line showing the light from Atlas alone. This means that Atlas and Pleione look very much like a single star because they are so close together. 
As we go back in time, we see Pleione separate from Atlas. The uncertainty in the motion is shown by the fuzziness of the lines. This fuzziness gets bigger as we go further back in time because uncertainty in motion becomes a larger uncertainty in separation as the time intervals get bigger. A hundred thousand years ago, a new peak starts to appear in the total light, indicating that Pleione is becoming visible as a separate star. 200,000 years ago, Pleione is far enough away that there is a clear new peak in the total light, which means that Pleione will appear as a separate star. That new peak is there for that whole cloud of uncertainty, so our motion is precise enough to be confident that the stars are visually separated. Now we go back to the present day. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Bye-bye.